All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to part four of our contractor series, where we're going through building an entire AI enabled chatbot or any service based business or contractors more specifically. In this episode, we're actually going to integrate Google Calendar into your bot. Whereas before we're dealing with a lot simpler questions, now we're trying to add a bit more functionality to the bot to give you back some of that time. This is going to be version one, where we're using Google Calendar and Zapier to simply update an event or to create one. In version two, we're actually going to be using Airtable to check whether or not any specific events have already been booked to avoid double bookings. Just something I want to make clear from the get-go. So without further ado, let's get into it. Now, although we're using Google Calendar for this example, a workaround would be to use Calendly as the actual backend engine for the appointment booking software. And you might be familiar with it. It already includes a bunch of the integrations that we need as well as to verify to make sure that place isn't double booked. But I think it is more beneficial in the long term to use Google Calendar as you have more opportunities for improvement. All right, let's go back into VoiceFlow. So where we left off, we had built the appointment settings part of it, meaning we had captured the leads information and then we had sent that information over to Zapier. Now, what that doesn't look like on Zapier's side, here's a URL. And if you'll remember, we had the body here with the name, the email, the address, the phone number, and the appointment date. Now, if we go into Zapier, this is what our workflow is going to look like. We're going to catch the webhook that we sent through VoiceFlow. We're then going to format that input because as you'll remember in VoiceFlow, we just gave a, basic, a blank slate for people to input their information in. We're going to format that information into a format that the computer can understand easily. We're then going to find an event in Google Calendar to see if that matches up with any other event. If there isn't an event, it's going to create a new one. And after all that's done, we're then going to send an email over to both you or the customer and the company or you. So let's go through these steps one by one. Now, for people who've never used Zapier before, it's actually pretty simple. It simply allows you to connect multiple apps together. In this case, we're connecting Google Calendar with an API call, or we're connecting Voice with Google Calendar is a better way to put that using an API call. And that's what we're catching right here with this catch hook. It's because in here, we're actually sending a hook over, or we're sending a piece of information over that includes all of the information about this specific customer. Go back to Zapier, we're telling you, I want you to catch this hook. And the URL that we're posting or the URL that we're with is the same one both in here and here. Once we've selected the right webhook, this is the interesting part where we want to format whatever input the customer gave to a date and time format that computers can easily understand. So all we're telling you is to look, I want you to format the input, which was, this can be anything that customer inputs. I want you to format into this sector. You can have multiple different versions, but this is the simplest one for now. You can choose a time zone if that applies to you. And then you can go ahead and test the action. Once that's done, you simply go, you add a new event, call it find event in Google Calendar, connect the account, and then the action is going to be pretty straightforward. The, you're going to want to input the calendar that you are looking for. The search term, we like to keep it very simple on both sides where we just call it appointment starting with a colon or a semicolon and then the output. So from here on out, we're always using the time and date that is formatted by Xavier because the initial format in here can be anything that's customer inputs, so which can create a lot of confusion down the road. So put this search term, the start time. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that although the start time might be the same, you also wanna make sure that you give it enough time for both you and your customer to be able to have uh, an appointment or consultation or whatever it is that you're doing. So one very simple way to do that is to just put, well, look, the end time is going to be whatever the start time is and then add it, however long it takes to not only drive there, but then do the computation and then come back. For this example, I put it three hours. You can put it as one day, one week, it really depends. And the way you change that is by simply putting plus or minus and then the number and then the unit, which in this case is hours. Now, the last major part of this equation, version one, is to make sure that if it doesn't find any event that already corresponds to this information right here, you're going to want to create a new Google Calendar event and then you simply call it as the above. Appointment starting on the exact same date, and then you can view the description they've gotten from Zapier initially. So in the catch webhook part, you'll see all the information that the user put in on VoiceFlow. Location, and you can really go ahead and customize these. What is important is to fill out the start date and time, as well as the end date and time. As we mentioned earlier, simply put in plus three hours is for us as a good rule of thumb, but each business has will have their own sort of time delay. And the rest of this information, unless it applies to you, you can pretty much ignore it. After that, press continue. You can go ahead and test this out. And then the last thing that we're going to do, just to make sure that both sides are on confirmation. All you need to do is put in your email and then you're going to go into the to action. Or, and this is another part of being able to connect multiple different apps using Zapier. Because once you've done all of this, you're going to want to have some information telling you that this has been completed except by going into Zapier. 
So a very simple way to do that is to send an email to both you and your customer advising that an appointment has been booked. For this example, we simply sent it to our company email. And here you would CC in whoever, for example, your salesperson who's going out on the field. From name, you can go ahead and fill all this information out. Really the most important part is the body here where you would input the customer's information that you got from Zapier or from VoiceLaw. And once you've done all of that, if you've done it correctly, which is actually, it's pretty straightforward. You can go ahead and publish that. And if we've done everything correctly, let's go ahead and test it in VoiceLaw. Once you've filled in some information, you can go ahead and send a request. And now if you've done everything correctly, you should see a 200. And more importantly, you should see some sort of notification. And as you can see here, we did get the notification from Zapier, which means that everything worked well. And then that was pretty much it for how to integrate Zapier and Google Calendar into your VoiceFlow app. Now, as I mentioned earlier, it's really important to keep in mind that this will not double check whether or not an appointment has already been booked at that specific time. We are working on version two, where I can show you guys a way to simply do that without having to go into a lot of custom coding. That video will be out soon, hopefully. If you have any questions or if you want to reach out to us, all the links are in the description. Otherwise, thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.